Good morning again. I am going into battle today. I have this big beast right here, right here, that I've been looking at. And it's been looking at me for a couple of weeks now. And the reason why I'm going into battle is because that is too big for my sawmill. But I've been here before and I'll be here again. I can make that work. So the problem is <clears throat> the heavy end, which is this right here, the wide end is 23 inches. And my sawmill can only do technically 20, but 19 and a half inches wide. So what I have to do is get my, that log on the sawmill. And once it's on the sawmill, I've got a very sharp chainsaw that I'm gonna fur off the edges. Now my head, this thing right here, says it goes up to 23, but it actually goes up to around 21 and a half. Let's actually pop it up and see. So, 22 inches. I can go 22 inches off the deck. Now, let's actually find out what the actual measurement from the, the bunk or the log deck, I guess, to the blade is gonna be 22 and a half. Okay. This is gonna be a fight because when I'm milling, I usually put my wood up against my stops, stops here, making the log over to one side. And if you take a look here, this is centered pretty much over the center of the, the log deck, I guess you could call it. So, this log is a blessing and a curse. I am going to be cutting two by fours out of this. I'm guessing that I'm gonna get 40 inch and a half by three and a half boards, two by four, that's a finished two by four. Um, some of them will be ugly. Some of them, some of them will be nice. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of work to get that 40 boards out. A lot more work than it would be to just throw a few of those in there and get 40 out of the smaller wood. But the blessing is I've got one giant piece of wood and every sawyer needs wood in order to saw to soy. <laughs> every sawyer needs wood in order to saw. And I've got a ton of it. And this guy is getting milled today. That is a freaking big log. My first test is gonna be running this along the top, finding out where it stops.
I'm probably going to regret this, but I'm going to try to go at this without, without the chainsaw first, just to see if I can whittle it away with the mill and just bring pieces down, like just the outsides down just as much as I can so that I can get the maximum amount out of wood. I always end up having to pull up my saw for this, but it's worth a try. So that was a successful cut. I am 18 by 24 on the big side of the log. So if I can flip this up and get 20 inches by 18, we'll see. I always hope that there's more wood in these logs than there is. This is a tapered end. This is the uh, this is a, a butt end of the tree, and the butt end always goes wide, and uh, they're always so tough to cut. I have a trick up my sleeve. Once I've taken the outside edges off, stay tuned, and you'll see. This is the other curse part of this. This thing's a thousand pounds at least. Well, there's another mistake. That's as high as I can go. <laughs> I messed up. I gotta pull the blade off. Oh well, I can replace it with a sharper one anyway.
that's a big piece of wood. Woohoo! Oh, I've waited long enough. I'm gonna go grab my secret weapon. Okay, here it is. It doesn't look any different than any of the other blades. Well, it kind of does actually. This is a Woodmiser silver tip carbon blade that a friend of mine sent me. Sent me 15 of them and I'm super excited to put them on the mill to see how fast, to see how fast I can actually mill now that I've got some really high quality blades with the kerf set perfectly and the tooth set right. Um, part of the reason why I chose to do this big log today is so that I could really put this blade to work and see what happens. So I'm going to switch this out now that I've got the, you've seen how, how long it takes me to do. That's probably a 18 inch cut with that old blade I was using on there. I hand sharpened. So that's as good as I can get with a hand sharpened blade. Now that I have this, let's see what the difference is. Okay, I am super excited for this. It's, we have a problem though. Oh no. Do you see my problem? Damn. I gotta flip this up and cut the top. Ah. It's fair to say that that is twice as fl twice as fast. So that's the Woodmiser silver tip blade and it's brand new versus a freshly sharpened old uh, economy blade that I've been running. I'm guessing that was about twice as fast. Considering the thickness of the wood, that's gonna save me so much time.
was one board off, 39 two by fours. 39 two by fours, some stickers, and that big old log has been slain. And now I only have those two huge ones to mess around with that I'm gonna have to do the same thing. But one down, two to go. So next up, Greg is gonna start pulling back some of this bank. We do really love this little foresty patch right here, but we can take a little bit of this dirt and use it to level this area out. And that'll give us a nice clean line for where the fence is gonna go. And we've got kind of some lumps and stuff here where the old fence was before we bought this property. So we'll get that all leveled out. We're gonna fill in a little bit next to where we pile up the wood. And it's gonna be really nice, I think. I love playing with my tractor. Ah, there we go. That's a lot more space. And this right here is gonna be going down there because I'm gonna be doing a huge amount of landscaping in front of the house, including building a yard where there is no land here. So I'm gonna be moving a ton of soil in the near future. But that's all the soil I'm moving for today. So there we have it. I like that a lot better. I might, I might break some of this off here, but I gotta go to town and get some fuel because I am out of diesel in that and I do not want to run out of diesel in my tractor. So Greg has been doing a little bit more work on just tidying up this little bank. We have a ton of wood in there from a dead tree that we need to get cleaned up because that is forest fire fuel. And it's gonna be really good hot tub wood because it's maple and that burns really hot, which means the hot tub gets hot faster. So we're gonna process that later on to store for the hot tub, but this looks awesome. I'm already thinking we're gonna plant a bunch of wildflowers in there and that it's just gonna look really beautiful. So we're going to continue on with the 
post today. We were undecided on where we want to put the gate. We do have a secondary access, but it goes onto our neighbor's property. And we kind of want to talk to him and see what he thinks we should do with that. I just like to have that as an option because if he is ever trying to move a trailer or something, we're trying to move a trailer sometimes it's, or we have big trucks come through, it's easier to have them loop around from our neighbor's house and come through our place but we'll just have to see. So we're gonna continue on getting the posts between this forested area. And we have a ton of cleanup to do first. We need to figure out where our line is gonna be for the fencing, and then we will start weed whacking and chainsawing and all that to get it nice and clear. So this is my first time really ever building a fence of, of this size and using this type of fence, which is a field fence. I went on YouTube to see um, how other people did it and I learned how to make an H post and whatnot. But the difference between our property and every other video on YouTube is we're like this all over the place. So it remains to be seen how well this actually turns out. And I know it's not gonna be easy.
Yeah, just cut the mushrooms off. Now cut the flat part. That was the flat part. <laughs> now, okay, no. Just, it'll be fine. Just cut the, finish the cut. How do I do that? You gotta go in more of an angle now. Like this? Nope. Yeah, like that. It's, it's, it's uncomfortable. Okay, Katie. How about her? Can I go like this? Now? If you're careful. If, if, yeah, you can, but just be careful. Because it wants to. the right way now, though. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's gonna. Just do it like that, yeah. Just be careful. There you go, that's it. Yep. Go higher then. A cut in the direction, remember. Yeah, that's it. Get yourself situated. There you go. <laughs> Look at that! What do you got in there? I didn't even leave any... Any holding wood. <laughs> it's because it was rotten. You did actually. This is this here would be your holding wood. It's a terrible cut, but it's it's uh it's <laughs> totally <first> fine. <laughs> Good job. We'll leave that there. Throw them further down so that we can get it later. <laughs> That's freaky firewood. Hey, stay here.
Can we just take a second to appreciate all of the personal protective equipment that you have on right now? <laughs> We've got safety glasses. Let's see the gloves. Those aren't, these are just warm gloves. Yeah, they're cut level, they're Kevlar as well. No, they aren't. Yeah, you can tell by the stitching. I mean, are, they aren't? I don't think so. Oh, they're just, well, anyway. They're just lightly lined. Anyways, I've had a few pokes in the eye, so. Yeah, and I've got glasses all the time, so. Yep. So we kind of messed up this corner and we thought we had an extra post to go in that was going to be the corner, but then we realized this one is actually the corner. So we found a scrap piece of wood to use for the H post part. It's going to be very long, but hopefully we have enough wire. And then I think once we get this in, we're going to be done for the day.
Oh, so sleepy. Right in the middle for you. Is it long oh, no, yours. No, yours is a small. It's a secondary wire too, right? End of the day, this is this is what happens. This is a fix for tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm gonna cook dinner. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>